this is it, fall outside the normal IDC sectors, will now be considered. So we've relaxed the arrangement in the IDC. And for existing IDC clients, there are large numbers of South African businesses. The IDC is already in contact with its business partners to consider repayment deferments on a case-by-case -case basis. By late afternoon today, details of these will be on the IDC website. Second, I deal with the issue of price increases. Last week, we published a list of 22 products uh, that the Consumer and Competition Commission will be monitoring particularly closely to ensure that there are no unjustified price increases. They include basic foods, personal uh, care products, and hygiene products like disinfectant and san sanitizer and cleaning agents, as well as key medical supplies like surgical masks and gloves. They also include rice, maize meal, milk, canned vegetables, meats, and other products. We have had complaints about uh, individuals and firms increasing prices unjustifiably. The Consumer and Competition Commissions met yesterday and are now investigating 11 firms who have been found to be selling products like face masks, hand sanitizers, uh, and others for high prices and abusing the situation. All firms are now being investigated and prosecutions will follow. The penalties are quite sharp fines and penalties of a million rand, fines or penalties of up to 10% of a company's turnover and up to one year in jail. The 11 firms that the regulators are investigating has been brought to the attention of the authorities by ordinary consumers. We thank our people for sharing that information. The National Consumer Commission has established a toll-free hotline 0800-014-880, 0800-014-880, and they can also be reached on the social media, uh, Twitter handle. On competition exemptions for banks, on Friday we issued an exemption for banks under the Competition Act to coordinate on measures which can be used to support businesses and ordinary account holders, ordinary citizens during this period. It was published in the Government Gazette yesterday. The exemptions will allow banks to work together to devise programs and relief measures which can help small businesses and consumers as well as firms in distress through these financial and economic challenges. In particular, the exemptions will enable the banks to coordinate uh, on matters like payment holidays and debt relief for business and individual citizens subject to financial stress, uh, to put limitations on asset repossessions of business and individual uh, citizens, and to coordinate on the extension of credit lines, additional credit lines to individuals and businesses who are subject to financial stress. The exemptions will allow banks to work together in ensuring continued functioning of the payment system uh, as well as sharing information and resources to ensure continued availability of banknotes at ATM, at branches and businesses. So we've basically done extraordinary things to enable the banking system to remain strong and intact so that South Africans can look to accessing the banks in the next three weeks. Next, I turn to the issue of essential services. Last night, President Ramaphosa announced that companies that are essential to the production and transportation of food, of basic goods, and of medical supplies will remain open during the lockdown period. This means that essential personnel required for the continued functioning of these companies during the lockdown will be exempted from the stay-home provisions. We will be publishing further guidelines tomorrow ahead of the lockdown, which begins on Thursday evening just after midnight. In other words, the lockdown covers the whole of Friday and onwards. I'll make a few preliminaries.
one hundred comments now, but more uh, firm details will be published in the Government Gazette by tomorrow. Uh, the President noted that grocery stores, supermarkets, uh, and spaza shops, I should add, will remain open during the lockdown. We call on our people to limit the trips to shopping centers for the purpose of shopping for food and basic goods only. All essential items, and the President outlined the list, which include food and beverages, medical supplies, personal products, hygiene products, uh, cleaning articles, will remain available throughout the lockdown and the period of the national disaster. This means that all businesses that are essential for the production and distribution of these items will be open during the lockdown. Businesses who remain open during the lockdown will be required to do so with the staff required to ensure that the service or production is uninterrupted. These businesses will also be required to take the necessary protocols to ensure adequate hygiene and social distancing. Consumer-facing businesses like grocery stores, supermarkets, pharmacies and spousal shops especially will be asked to educate their staff and customers on the required protocols and to enable uh, social distancing between customers. There are a number of categories of essential services that due to time constraints the President could not mention yesterday. These include essential staff in the following areas that are being looked at now for inclusion in the gazetted list. They would include those responsible for essential care for the elderly and sick persons, including home care and old age homes. So to reassure South Africans that we are aware of elderly people, ill people, who are absolutely dependent on the care and support that they have, and we will make sure that these are facilitated. Essential private security services for the protection of property and persons. All essential back office services to enable salary, wages, and human resource departments to work so that we have smooth management of wage and salary payments through this period. Those assisting in transportation of food and other essentials to people's homes, uh, including uh, online retail as well as transport systems that support any of the essential services. My colleague, Minister Didis, has spoken about essential animal welfare and emergency veterinary services. We'll also be looking at key maintenance systems required at workplaces to avoid serious damage <coughs> to economic assets, where the interruption of that service will destroy critical working areas, factories, or machinery. Members of Parliament, provincial legislatures, municipal councils, and their core staff, as well as the government departments.